everyone, and welcome to the Siemens Network Connections Podcast. I'm Brian Duvall, and I'm actually pretty excited to be here today. I'm, I'm with Henry Seaman, who you may know becomes Siemens' new CEO, effective January 1st. Now, for those of you who are aware, a new CEO is a pretty rare thing around here. I mean, in fact, Henry's only the fifth CEO since we were founded back in 1903. So this is a pretty big event. So I guess without further ado, Henry, welcome and congratulations on the new role. To kick things off, can you tell us a bit about yourself? I mean, maybe a brief history of your connection to the company? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, you know, my background, I grew up right down the street from uh, from the company growing up as a kid. My my dad worked at the company for most of his career until he retired, leading the uh, the sales organization. And as a result of that, I mean, I, I really grew up very close to, you know, the company and, and the factory itself. Um, you know, professionally, I, I I just joined the company in, in 2017. So somewhat recently and you know before joining the semen company I, I worked in consulting i worked in in supply chain and operations elsewhere but um you know like i said I, i've been very close to the company really since uh since day one well i i you know i'm privy to a little bit of your resume and it's you've built quite a resume like before coming here in 2017 but i also know your roots run pretty deep i mean what are your earliest memories here of the semen company <laughs> uh, okay, have a lot of them. Um, I, I guess the earliest memory, um, which actually I look back at quite fondly, um, you know, I mentioned my my dad worked at the company, so I, I spent a lot of time here, just um, kind of following him around, and you know, would attend different company events and so on. But um, I, I do remember, I think, to answer specifically, my earliest memory is probably, you know, he would come here on the weekends. And typically I would, I would come and I'd join him. And I remember just bringing my soccer ball and while he would be working in, you know, either his office or he'd spend a lot of time in the, in the telecommunications room, um, I would be just dribbling and setting up cones up and down the hallway in the Princeton building over on the east side um, and just spend a lot of time kind of killing time over, uh, over with my soccer ball. Well, Unfortunately, it didn't actually translate to much in terms of my my soccer skills because I never really was an incredible soccer player, but had fun nonetheless. We've we've talked a little bit about some of your background previously, and you kind of started off, you know, the lower level <laughs> to see the company. Um, but that's not kind of not where your work in the industry itself ended. I mean, you actually went to work with one of our certified installers for a time, right? I did. Um, yeah, that was actually, and that was in Connecticut. That was, let's see, I was in college and I spent a summer with one of our, our installers out in the Seattle area. And um, I was introduced, I think actually CK made the introduction, if I remember correctly, yeah. to, um, to one of our installers out there, Pacific Communications Cabling. And I um, you know, went out there, I went through the, the CI training course and, and spent the summer pulling cable. And it was, um, I mean, I, I had a blast doing it. It was a great team. It was, you know, my first time, you know, experiencing the city of Seattle, which I certainly enjoyed and, uh, and had a fun time there. But it was a, uh, I mean, it was a great experience. It was three months um, with a team. And for whatever reason, I mean, my, my memories looking back at that summer, because this is going back maybe 16, 17 years ago, um, I feel like most of the schools must have been expanding with these like temporary trailer classrooms because I feel like all I did that summer was climb underneath these classrooms and just help to get them set up for the upcoming school year. Well, I, you know, I, I do a lot of work with our certified installers, so I think it's great that you've got the knowledge of, of their business. They're such a big part of our success over the years. And, you know, being able to see the business from their perspective all the way up and through to, you know, the role of CEO. I mean, that's end to end knowledge that, you know, I believe is going to help you tremendously as you, as you move forward. Um, so now you're in school, you've got some time with, with some of our CIs. I mean, where did you go from there? Uh, yep. So I, I started my career in consulting. Um, and, you know, I went to school down in Virginia. So from there, I landed in, in the Washington, D.C. area <clears throat> and, um, you know, was primarily focused on, or I worked for Deloitte Consulting, focused on organizational strategy, got to, um, you know, work on a couple engagements specific to kind of merger and acquisition integration. And, um, you know, it was a great experience because I, I think like anyone that spent some time in, in general management consulting, you get, um, you know, you learn a lot just by looking under the hood and getting to know how these large 
organizations operate. And that's what I got to do for, um, you know, for about five years in that area. And I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, from there, I, I, I ended up going back to school. So that brought me up to Boston for a couple of years. I went and got my MBA at, at MIT and, and focused primarily in, in operations and supply chain. And based on that focus, that ended up landing me, you know, after that two-year period down in Texas, where I joined Apple's global supply chain team. So most people may not realize that Apple's operations headquarters for North and South America is based in Austin, Texas. So um, so I moved down there and, and I spent some time with their global supply chain team, um, which you know meant I was I was working with our suppliers and the global supply chain, primarily originating in China and, and managing through um, distribution of fulfillment in North and South America. And then I moved over to lead parts of the reseller operations team, which was a uh, fantastic experience. So I was helping to oversee product selling to the AT&Ts and Verizons and Walmarts and Best Buys of of um, of the world. And during that time, got to support the the launch of some exciting products like, you know, the phone that um, that I think most people are familiar with was able to <laughs> help launch the first the first Apple Watch, which was an incredible experience. Actually, that launched the same day that my first son was born. So that was a uh, a pretty exciting week overall. So I um, I moved around a little bit and and ultimately came full circle, coming back to uh, to Connecticut with my wife and at that time two kids, two boys. Um, as I said before, wow. back in 2017. I mean, just the and the, the range of responsibilities within those roles is pretty impressive. How do you see that really, you know, being moved over? How does that help you in your new role at the same company? Really, kind of a crash course in learning basics of strategy. And how do you enter a new situation, a new environment, and try to learn as much as you can in a short amount of time so that you can add value? And really, the, the way to do so is by asking good questions, um, acknowledging that you don't know everything and you need to learn. And then, you know, in the case of, you know, in the consulting world, you're providing value by helping to connect those dots and identify opportunities. And I think, you know, aside from you know, one person's role as a consultant, any any manager, any individual for any organization, I, I think that's, you know, incredibly valuable skill set to have. So I like to think that that's what I've been able to bring to, um, you know, to the roles that I've had since I since I left consulting. Now, as we've learned, you know, with the transition plan, this wasn't knee jerk. This wasn't necessarily out of the blue. Um, there is a long term, well thought out, you know, transition plan in place. I mean, can you give us a little bit of details on how that's worked to date? And Yeah, absolutely. And and you're spot on. I mean, it, this has been <laughs> very diligently thought out and planned, um, which which I very much appreciate. I mean, I mean, that conversation that I just shared with you happened well over two years ago now. And so the runway has been exceptionally long and i look at um you know other transitions you know from other companies where they go through that type of leadership transition and um you know i I feel very fortunate to have had that that amount of time to proactively plan and start to gain more exposure and learn and so um you know during for most of that time i i still had my responsibility of managing the global supply chain team but you know also started working very closely with carl um you know, with the entire board of directors and really from uh, from that point forward was gaining as, as, as much exposure as possible, um, you know, for the last couple of years. And you can imagine, Brian, I mean, just think of what we've gone through in this past year with with COVID and and all of the impacts and challenges that um, that that is unexpectedly presented. It's been a, um, you know, a lot of learning in a short amount of time just as a result of that. So. But yeah, I know. So I, I do consider myself fortunate and to, um, yeah, have that that gift of time to take yeah. advantage of, of all that planning and due diligence. Yeah. I mean, I think you, from my perspective, I've always been impressed with the company as a collection, how many really smart, dedicated people there are, um, you know, just, just doing the work every day. And from my perspective, I've seen you avail yourself of that and, um, you know, seem to always be learning. So I guess that two, two year runway, as you put it, which I think is a great analogy. Um, you know, I think that, that says, that says a lot about the way the company operates, you know, that everything's, everything's got a plan, mm-hmm. you know, that's mm-hmm. great. So 
now this is this is this this might be one of those tougher questions because as i mentioned that early on i mean you're you're only the fifth ceo the company's been around 118 years you know and that's that's five generations you represent the fifth generation of stable family leadership i mean there's a 118 year legacy of success for you to build on and uh you know what do you think are the most critical lessons that all of that history can teach you i mean what do you take forward with that with all of that legacy behind you yeah um that's a good question when i walk into uh to the office i, I walk past our museum and um you know i know that most of the the seamen employees that are listening to this are, are hopefully familiar with that museum have had the chance to uh to visit and and kind of walk through and see them. but for those that haven't seen a company that haven't um we really kind of lay out the evolution of the seaming company over the course of those, you know, four coming up on five generations, like you said, Brian. And, um, you know, for me, I, uh, you know, it's it's almost a daily reminder of, um, you know, the reason that we exist in this 118th year is due to our ability and, and skill at being flexible and agile and and nimble, but at the same time maintaining sight of what our, our strengths are and our core competencies. And, um, you know, the reason I, I bring up that museum is because I, I think that really nothing does a better job of illustrating that than just, you know, walking through and, and seeing that that progression over time of how we've how we've evolved, because we are, you know, obviously a very different company today than we were 118 years ago. But we're also a different company today than we were 30 years ago than we were 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I think with each generation and with each decade within each generation, um, and you could probably break it down even further, I think that is um, really an overarching lesson that um, that history is able to teach us. I always, in the back of my mind, I like to break things down to like simple analogies. I always tend to think, you know, inspired by the past, you know, inspired by our history, but really focused on the future. Because wherever you like sit that. on the timeline of the Seaman Company, somebody's learned from the people before them, but they're still looking forward. It always seems to be a, a perpetual. Absolutely. <laughs> looking forward. Yeah. And, and another, and the term I've heard both you and Carl use, you know, quite a bit is just the concept of stewardship. You know, is that, what does that, what does that mean to you? Obviously, we all get it. You're, you're, you're the fifth in a long line of really great company stewards. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you view, how do you view that role? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I mean, you, you just said it. Carl and I spent a lot of time talking about this, and um, and yeah, actually, there was an, an internally published Spotlight magazine that came out just last week um, where Carl talks a bit about this. So, for any Seaman employees, I encourage you to read that if, if you haven't already. But really, um, you know as leaders of the company, and it's not just Carl, it's not just myself, it's John, CK, um, I, I think it's it's much broader reaching, but we see our responsibility as, as stewards for the company. And um, really what that means is, is really focusing all of our time and attention and effort to to build a company that is stronger in the future than it was in the past is, is really it in a nutshell. You know, we see our responsibility as, as enabling that you know that transition from from gener from one generation to the next, and um, you know I, I think looking at Carl, he's uh, he's done a fantastic job of doing exactly that, as have each of the leaders before him, and um, really that's how that's how I see my responsibility going forward as well. Oh, well, all I can say is I wish you the best of luck. Um, I think that's a pretty powerful message to sort of start wrapping this up on. Um, yeah, I'm inspired. Maybe a little teary-eyed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> add great, add great orator to your list of skills because that I think you summed it up really well. Uh, but well, before we do wrap everything up for for everybody, was there just any last concluding thoughts or just can we leave you with me saying good luck? I feel like this company is in great hands. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess concluding thoughts is you know I I just want to um, extend my thanks and appreciation to. Um, to everyone in the company and everyone outside the company um, that we interact with every day. I mean, it's not just when we talk about the Seaman family and we say one Seaman, one team, it's not just those that um, 
that are part of the team and company family. It is kind of like I mentioned before, much broader reaching than that. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the things that I picked up very early on when I when I was traveling and, and spending time with some of our our CIs and and our customers and distribution partners and and um, and suppliers that it's a uh, yeah it's it's a very powerful network and I look forward to to serving everyone that's that's part of that network. Well, again, thank you so much. Congratulations, all the best. Uh, we know we're in great hands, and and with that, I'd like to say. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to everyone that joined us today. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.